Welcome to Infused, a monthly meetup where we can talk marketing for manufacturers. My name is Kim Lloyd, Special Projects Director here at Fuse Hub. Each month we have a special speaker or couple of speakers, and what they'll do is discuss a topic about marketing that's near and dear to our hearts. We are very interested in hearing uh, your feedback as to what we might cover in future sessions. So come visit me at the website table afterwards if you've got some ideas of topics that you'd like to hear about. Uh, so we'll, after our speaker today, Tim Jenton, is done speaking, we'll break into different tables to talk about marketing challenges and do some networking. So please feel free to pop around and talk to different, um, different people at various tables. The, after the presentation also, we'll want to, um, uh, we'll record it, everything and we will send out an email later on today or tomorrow morning that has a recording of the presentation. If you're having any technical difficulties or want to speak to somebody at Fuse Hub, visit our Fuse Hub table on the upper left hand side of the floor. Now to introduce our speaker today. Tim Jensen is a campaign manager at with more than a decade of experience in the digital marketing industry. He is comfortable managing ads across all major platforms, including search, display, social, and video. He's worked with accounts from SMB to enterprise levels in a variety of different industries. Tim, thank you so much for joining us today, and we look forward to hearing what you have to say. All right, thanks, Kim, and thanks all for the opportunity to speak to you all. Um, so again, I work for um, Clicks Marketing, um, work in the PPC, pay-per-click marketing world, um, managing ads for quite a variety of businesses here. Um, so again, today the topic is talking about tracking and digital marketing. Let me just pull up my screen share here so I can get the presentation up. All right, so today, um, again, the title being Track It, the Basics of Tracking and Reporting for Digital Marketing. Um, so just kind of a high level overview of what we should be tracking in digital marketing efforts, um, why it's important to kind of pinpoint some metrics versus others, um, some tools, some free tools that you can look at that can kind of help you in that tracking process. Um, and then the last section I just wanted to go over just some general considerations to think about um, when you're looking at data to make sure that you're making the right decisions from that data. Um, so let's get started by talking about metrics here. Um, so, you know, any of you that have delved into looking at any sort of online metrics for your businesses, um, I'm sure, you know, if someone's giving a report, whether you're working with an agency or someone internally doing marketing, or if you're kind of delving in and trying to do it yourself, um, you'll see a whole bunch of metrics popping up, um, you know, a few of them being thrown out in this slide here. And depending what end of the world you're dealing with, SEO, PPC, or looking at Google Analytics for your site, um, just seems like you're flooded with so many things, like should I be focusing on clicks or impressions or click through whatever that would be. And that can be pretty confusing, especially if it's not a world that you work in day by day. Um, so I wanted to start by kind of building the foundation for what focus on what metric act matter here. That's definitely a challenge whenever I start um, working with a new client, um, just to kind of help them focus toward what's actually gonna matter to their business. And what I like to always ask is kind of the first question is what actually matters to your bottom line? Um, and this can obviously vary based on the type of business as to how the specifics play out. Um, but really for any business, it's going to come down to what kind of ROI are you making back um, and how can you tie metrics to that ROI? Um, so if you're selling directly through the web, like if you have a e-commerce store or such where people are actually making purchases right on your website, um, your goals are going to be a little more easily trackable as this person came to the website and actually purchased this. Um, I would say I know 
a lot of people in manufacturing into things, maybe more in the B2B lead things where you're wanting someone to fill out a contact form on your site or pick up the phone and call you. Um, so in that case, your goals may be more focused just on increasing what percent of those leads that make it through your forms are actually qualified people and how many of those people are actually making it through the sales process. Um, and then, you know, in the long run, what kind of revenue you're getting back from that. Um, so I just want to circle this back where this is where I see many people focus, um, you know, especially maybe coming from a traditional marketing into things where you don't have the pieces always to tie everything back to revenue. Um, that, you know, impressions, okay, that's a good metric to look at, but it's not really the end goal. Um, CTR, your click-through rate, percentage of people that are clicking through to your site. Again, it, it can be a good, um, good benchmark to show how your ad content it was resonating with people, but it still doesn't tell the whole story. They could be clicking through to your site. They could be bouncing off right away, not purchasing anything, not looking at any more content, um, decreasing your CPC or cost per click or CPM cost per thousand impressions. Again, a lot of times I'll see people kind of hyper focus in on, we want to bid on the cheapest keywords or the cheapest ad placements and a lot Sam, I think he froze. So everybody, I think we have a frozen speaker. Uh, we'll just wait for him to get back online and... and uh, rejoin us. Okay, while he's, uh, <laughs> while he's getting back online, uh, just a couple of notes. Um, one is that we've had some feedback that people would like to see the uh, a different day or and or time for our monthly meetup. Uh, people say that manufacturing Mondays are pretty busy. So, in the uh, if you've got some ideas or thoughts about when you might want to have our meetup in future days or times again see me at the websites table welcome back tim <laughs> thank you sorry about that okay. uh, i don't know what happened let's see where did where did you lose me did you lose me on uh, the just just at that uh the, the um, just because you can track it yeah yeah slide. okay all right sorry about that no, that's okay well, it, i know we had some issues before i don't know <laughs> hopefully it'll hold out through the rest here okay all right okay we're all good with hearing and seeing everything now. Sorry about that. Yes. All right. So what I wanted to get into next is kind of talking about those metrics, metrics that actually matter to your business's ROI to your bottom line. Um, so on the top section here, I have some metrics that I would kind of categorize as surface metrics. Again, not, not bad to look at. Um, a lot of these can correlate with awareness for your brand and such. Um, how many clicks you're getting to your site, how many impressions your ads are getting. CTR is the click-through rate. That's the percentage of people that actually see your ads and then click it. Um, CPC being how much you're actually paying for a click. Um, but at the end of the day, again, those do not correlate directly to ROI. Um, so on the bottom, I'd put what are those actual ROI metrics? Um, and the challenge of these is these take a little more work sometimes to actually set up and make sure you're tracking and correlating them with campaigns and channels properly. Um, but I would position those as your leads, your conversion rate, um, and cost per lead. Um, and I'll get into a little more detail about those as we go. Um, so a few notes here about leads. Um, again, we can track what's called a conversion in a lot of um, ad platforms or you know, even your organic search and social and stuff in Google Analytics, you can track those goals or conversions. Um, and a lot of times you can just look at like the total numbers that are coming through and such, but some important 
areas to bring up are that, you know, not every lead is the same. And I'm sure one that works in the business realm is very well aware, aware of this. Um, you know, your leads that are cheap, you might be paying a low cost for them, but they might also be lower quality. Um, so ideally, if you have good backend data on your CRM, uh, where you can see that leads came from a specific channel, like this one came from a Google search campaign versus a Facebook campaign or such. Um, so that's where you want to look at what channels are actually driving the most qualified leads that are actually making it through your sales process or purchasing from your site or whatever that might be. Um, so here's where you kind of want to look at those metrics throughout the sales process. So don't just look at the conversion rate to filling out a form on the site and the cost per conversion there. But next, look at the conversion rate, the likelihood of those people who fill out the form to actually be a qualified lead, whatever those benchmarks might be. And that's something that for every business, it's unique where, you know, for some businesses, it might be um, that your potential lead, you know, they're from a company with a certain number of employees or a certain industry or a certain job title or whatever that threshold might be to qualify someone. Um, and then the next stage, the, again, these stages might even vary by business, but this is just what I see people use a lot, um, being like a sales qualified lead. Like they're actually interested enough that they're moving forward in those conversations with sales and then all the way to purchase. So ideally you want to look at the likelihood of people moving through each of these stages and how much you pay for each of these. Um, so a few notes also um, in thinking about your various campaigns, who you're targeting, what you're targeting them with, as the people that are top of funnel, maybe higher up in that consideration stage, they're just starting to research, you know, maybe you're hitting them with, here's a guide about my product or such. You're not really pushing them to sales right away. So you're probably gonna pay less for those leads but you know they're going to be less qualified. They're going to need more nurturing to make it through that sales process. A lower funnel lead, someone that's maybe immediately actually looking for your product and they're ready to purchase, it's probably going to cost a little more to reach those people, but they're going to be more qualified. Um, and here's another important factor that I always try to bring up with clients because um, a lot of times I'll see people like, either very, very focused on just hitting those people which are ready to buy and missing out on people that might be qualified prospects. Sorry, folks, we lost him again. <laughs> Okay, we can see a screen. Tim, I, th I think it's your uh, connection. It's funny. Um, we've uh, had some connection issues with your computer. So let's give them a few more minutes. So for those of you who weren't around on um, soliciting feedback for two things, one is our future topic ideas and also speakers and also a change of date and time. All right. Tim. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't know why Remo does not <laughs> like my computer. I know, I know have, your but... computer seems to have it. Yeah. So okay. we're almost done here anyway. So, so sorry, but I know that's the most annoying thing when it keeps going out. Um, so another thing to consider is considering the channel that people are coming from, um, whether it's search or display or social, each channel is going to have different goals and such. Um, had to be fun here and throw up the meta logo as most of us probably know that's what Facebook is now. Um, but you know, something like LinkedIn, even for B2B tends to be pricier, but if you're going after those B2B targets, that's going to be like those exact job titles that you're going after. Um, so probably more qualified or that's what a lot of my clients see. Um, let's talk about some tools that you can track with. Um, one thing I'll talk about here, which again, I, I'll make sure this presentation is sent out afterwards um, on top of you know the 
viewing issues, you have to be able to access the links and such. Um, UTM tags, basically what these are, are uh, tags that you add onto the end of a link and it shows um, what source people are coming from, what campaign they came from. Um, and this will allow you to kind of tie those pieces back together as to where they came from when you look at how qualified they are. So there's a couple of guides or there's a guide you can look at and there's a tool you can use to set those links up. Um, if you're doing online advertising, ad platforms will have pixels that you can set up um, that you can make sure that you're tracking those actions in the site, whether that's a form fill out or an actual purchase or whatever that might be. Um, you know, we don't have the time to get into the nuances of all these now, but, you know, I'm happy to kind of point you in the direction of the resources for each platform. Most of them are pretty straightforward where they'll um, literally give you like a pre-written email that you can send on to a developer to throw onto the site. Um, or if you're tech savvy enough yourself, they're pretty easy to set up. Um, Google Analytics is a free tool. Um, if you don't have it set up, we definitely have it set up or see if someone has it set up on your site and can share access where you can basically see anything and everything about who's visiting your site, how much time they're spending on the site, pages they're viewing and such. Um, Google Data Studio, um, a little bit more of a learning curve, but it's a nice um, platform where you can pull in data from ad platforms and analytics. Also free um, if you're using non-Google sources um, like LinkedIn or Facebook, there are connectors that you might have to pay for. But if you just want to show like Google Analytics data or Google Ads data, you can do all that for free in there. So nice way to make reports that are presentable and like a dashboard you can interact with. Um, the last section, just um, quickly here, I know I have a few more minutes and then we want to dive into just a discussion time. Um, just some notes to think about when you're actually looking at data. Um, and making those decisions on um, just some missteps that I see people making sometimes. Um, one of those is gathering enough data before making your decisions. Um, so there's a few factors here uh, where you may have a really long sales cycle where if you're looking at lead data from just the last week, maybe it takes a month or more for leads to move through. So you want to give that a fair chance to check out to see if your leads from a certain campaign actually are making it to sales. Um, timing, um, again, if you launch a campaign, you just run it for a week, the system is still kind of learning what works and what doesn't work. So a lot of times you want to run for at least a month or even more to really um, let a campaign get its footing. Um, and another thing that I see a lot running ad campaigns is you don't want to turn off an ad too early if it seems like it's not working. I've so many times seen like you know, a few days after I launch a campaign, a certain ad is the worst performer and then the next week I look at it and it's the best performer. So you definitely want to allow enough time there. Um, another thing is don't focus on super short time periods. I'll have clients email me like, oh no, our leads are down today. And I'm like, well, did you look at the last week or the last month? You know, things are going to dip up and down by day. That's normal. Um, so you want to look at longer time frames. like just an example from an actual client here where like conversions went down and cost per conversion kind of spiked for one day. But if you look at like a whole couple months, you can see, well, everything's kind of up and down and it kind of averages out over time. So you're going to have days that are different. Okay, we'll give them a couple more minutes to wrap up and then we'll move on to networking. So some other networking um, opportunities. Our, our next um, Infused is going to be on Monday, March 7th, just to let you know. Uh, Greg Michio is going to talk about the digital twin approach to marketing. And which basically means emulating your really tightly integrating your marketing approach online to your sales team and your sales efforts. 
a lot of times we see marketing and sales be pretty segregated. And I think um, Greg's approach to digital twin approach to, uh, to marketing uh, really changes the game for that segregation. So um, more tightly integrating it. Um, I think, oh, all right, Tim. All right. <laughs> Um, yeah, sorry about that. Um, it's okay. <laughs> I know yeah. you're almost done, so. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I literally have just like a couple more um, slides here. Um, so, yeah, just noting when tracking goes down, um, offline factors that can affect things like if you've had your brand is in the news, whether that's good or bad or seasonality, whether um, supply chain has been shipping inevitably, unfortunately, is affecting you know, I have multiple clients where that kind of things affects their ability to do business. Um, so again, just some few super quick takeaways here. I'm um, just focus on those metrics that actually matter for your ROI. Um, if possible, correlate data by specific channels and campaigns with your own lead and sales data and just allow enough time to get the right data. Um, so thank you, Erin. Thanks for bearing with me. I'm not sure why I have these issues with that Remo here, but we'll definitely send out the slide um, presentation after and I'll be available for questions. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Tim. Much appreciated. Uh, Tim will be at the very first upper left hand table and you can dive into some more questions with him about tracking. Uh, so the other tables that we have uh, that are going to be moderated by Fuse Hub experts our websites, which is where I'll be, branding and strategy with Paul. Uh, Brent's gonna be in the software and tools table. Eric, who runs our solutions program, will be at the solutions program table. And Patty, who runs our um, innovation fund, will be at the innovation fund table. Steve Molito, our infamous Steve, Steve Molito, will be at the content and SEO table. And Laura Dorado, our newest member of the Fuse Hub team, will be at the graphic design table. So if you have questions about graphics, feel free to go over and see her. Just want to remind you, we're offering a free needs assessment to anyone who would like to get assistance getting your next project started on the right foot. We can bring the right experts to bear depending on where you think your marketing problem spot is and make sure that we're really addressing your need and helping you scope out that project. Whether you use few sub services or someone else, it's always helpful to know the right questions to ask. Uh, you can visit fusehub.com expert consultation and fill out the information and somebody will get back to you to set up that needs assessment. I'll also share that link in the chat when we're done. Uh, so the conference will automatically close at noon. We thank you for joining and hopefully we will see you all on Monday, March 7th. Thanks everybody.